Hey guys, BaltyW here, back with another VOD review. It is time to stop hopping in into these trios uh, FNCS games. The championship series was underway over the weekend, and we got a ton of uh, really, really good trios that are starting to form in terms of figuring out how to actually play trios. I think we're starting to see that at the top. Maybe at the bottom, people are going to start catching up after after these VOD reviews, I guess. You know, I just have to flex them. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but yeah, the pros, they're really starting to figure out how to play trios and also how to play in this current state of the game, which a lot of people are curious how to play in this current state of the game. The mechs, because of Retail Row, because of Tilted Town, because of Loot Lake, they've got to figure out what is good, what is bad. I think a lot of people are talking about Retail Row and we're hopping in with Edgy, Scented, and Rex. Right now, we're going to be doing Dementos, Fluxy, and Letwick as soon as we can, uh, but I'm going to be doing a bunch of stuff this week, so it might be a little rough in terms of content this week. We're going to try. Um, with that being said, make sure you like, subscribe, do all the things on my social media, and we'll hop into this VOD review right now. So yeah, Mongrel, Men Mitro, and Benji made waves on Twitter this weekend because of Retail Row. And even before that, they were arguing about, like, <laughs> they were trying to figure out what the best way to actually uh, stop people from coming here. Because when you get contested, it's really difficult to fight and to play around this. You can hear the zombies all around. I can't believe we're doing a... Ah. I can't believe we're doing a VOD review with zombies in it. Like, what is this? <laughs> I never thought that this would be a thing. Remember... Back when zombies were there during the winter season. And a bunch of people sent me zombie VODs. I was like, nope, no zombie VODs. It's actually crazy how they just took over this house just because just because Edgy was here. But let's talk about the split a little bit. This is such a common split from way back in the day. Shops or block tops versus houses. And the interesting thing is how Rex is able to go down by himself. And Scented and Edgy stay a little bit closer. I did see some people splitting and even taking Poverty. Let's zoom through this. It's a retail split. Not too much crazy. I think the one thing I want to point out is how people farm the zombies. How people farm the pylons. And especially as time goes on right now, they're just like straight up pickaxing. But later on when third parties can become a thing and when third parties come and rotate through retail and even... Tifu's team, for example, is landing Meteor and uh, the factories and then pushing into retail. It's interesting. These guys actually left retail too. Maybe because they didn't have any pylons on their side. But yeah, what what I was seeing from Mitro Benji and even Kinstar and Hunter and them is they were boxing up onto the pylon and farming it without any zombies. There was, they would just go two at a pylon. One guy would box up and you would hold all the walls. And then the other guy would just pickaxe it. No zombies were able to fight them at all. And then also nobody was able to third party them, which was really cool. But look at this loot for Edgy. Gold Scar, Minigun, Prox. Like three golds already. Not something you typically see. Scented as not the greatest, but they will loot up. It's interesting too now how Edgy gets his loot. Still no shotgun actually on anybody except Scented who has a drum shotgun. But what's cool is how Edgy goes up. On top of a building afterwards to spot out and make sure they're safe because he has his gold scar and the proximity gl so typical old duo strats coming in but in retail i think a little bit more important when you get that gold scar to try to zone and make sure nobody is fighting nearby and as soon as you realize there's nobody in retail they just chilled and everybody starts farming at the same time Tifu with 72 hours and Cloak were, were pushing for Meteor, obviously. And they were staying in zone, farming the pylons forever. Like, here they take a little bit of damage and it's, it's worth it. No matter what. To farm extra pylons, staying in zone is worth it. As long as they can get out. How many launch pads do they have? That was the thing that uh, Mitro and Benji were getting. They were getting so many launch pads throughout that entire process. This is starting to become very, very common in trios. It's, the wide splits to cover tons of areas and to zone, right? To zone and cover and figure out, okay, these guys are rotating this way. These guys are rotating this way. We're going to be able to have a path, but also to push people. So if Scented sees somebody, these guys are going to have to move slightly even further south, right? To avoid the team that he thinks is all on Scented. 
just to avoid any possible engagements. So when you when you rotate as a trio, move wide, and then that's also setting yourself up for a good pre-fight positioning. If you ever do end up having to fight, or if you want to fight, you are split and can cover from multiple angles and push from multiple angles. I talked about that a lot in my video on Zaitsaf and no, just Zayt and Saf way back when in the World Cup. And I'm going to be able to use the, uh, the battle map just to watch their rotate. Man, Destiny Jesus got blessed, by the way, with this battle map thing. It's actually really good. It's very good. So they just wiped that team coming from behind them. This is the when you're on the when you're on the decent side of the zone, like you're not on this side, you're on the side that's closing, you know, relatively slowly. You can end up doing these things where you really just pinch a team from behind. And the zone, it does cause you trouble because now rotating in is gonna be rough for them. But again, slow side of the zone, they can run so much faster ahead of it. And have really no troubles getting in at all. You can see this red team though is all watching them. All guns trained. But. They end up being fine. A nice mat switch to metal. Right as he gets in. A lot of spam though. Not a big deal. End game. Already got two eliminations. Two kills. Let's watch the end game. I want to see their style first and foremost out of anything. I want to see their style. Do they play mid ground? Or do they play heavy high ground? Do they have a storm scout? Yeah, they do. I was wondering how they got half and half out here perfectly. Their spot kind of sucks when you think about it. They, they really only had one target here because they're on the side of an iceberg where they can't see up above. I like what they did there just briefly when they were shooting out every build to their side. I don't know exactly what their plan was, but I like it just because you can open up a lot. And that does open up the sight lines for you to see more. And I'm already talking about how they can't really see much except these teams over here to their side. And then fight against people above them. But They have two heavy snipes. Why aren't they using the Storm Scout as well? I'm not sure I get this really careful play where Senta is being heavy, or is heavy sniping like we saw him earlier on that cone. Where he heavy sniped the cone. Okay, one thing I'm noticing is when you're landing, this is a solo, this applies to everything, but when you're landing on top of a cone, like they did on this metal, almost everybody is jumping up placing two floors and then tunneling on top of it instead of going like this landing and then coming out to the side all right because what this does is draw when you come out to the side and just box up over here number one you're you're most likely going to end up on a bad layer eventually when this team decides to level up one or whatever um and then at the same time you are just Putting yourself at more risk, whereas if you can land on the cone and then bunny hop basically exactly and then box yourself up, you're minimizing all the time that it takes for somebody to be able to shoot you, right? So when you land on a cone, instead of moving to the side, just go up and make sure you get these two walls though, right? So that you can connect and you're connected fairly well. And then what they did here too is what they, instead of landing on top of each other, they staggered and landed to the sides of each other and they both did their little cone jumps. Did they just split their heels and drop? Yeah, Senta doesn't have his heavy sniper anymore because he got split the, the shockwaves with, from Rex. They dropped that heavy sniper. They still have one on Rex. But nice. I like the, the no indecisiveness there on that launch pad. Just instantly all together on top of the launch pad. Solid. Oh, 
I wanted to watch. Scented. Oh, cool. Alright, there we go. <laughs> I was gonna say, oh, cool. I have a sniper reticle on my screen. It's funny how little shockwave grenades lag the servers now, it's great. That used to be, that used to crash the server if that many people use shockwaves at the same time. So mid-ground players, a lot like um, what we saw with Booga Aspect and Animal. RIP that team. Also, they haven't really fired this minigun at all. I think they plan to make a play with it eventually. I haven't really done anything aggressive in this game at all. Yes. That is going to be a reoccurring thing. That was so clearly, they had that plan for ages. You could see how um, Rex, or who has the minigun, know how edgy was pulling it out every once in a while. They were getting ready to start that play. They were pulling it out and then going for high ground at the end there. Nice. Let's continue watching edgy. Let's, let's also think about timing here. It was like seventh circle that I start them, see them pulling it out, and then eighth circle they go for it. I think eighth circle is probably the last time that people are going to be shock or shock waving up. Um, this is a play that we saw Psalm back in duos even start executing with the minigun, and I think people are starting to realize the the value of the minigun. You can literally shred through metal builds up on a high ground very, 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 very fast, very, very, very fast, and then with the combination of shock waves too. See, that guy definitely wasn't going for height, he was just getting out. And then just on top. Ooh, ooh. Not gonna lie, West players are almost always ahead of the meta. Like, I feel like NA is always behind, NA East is always behind the curve in terms of meta, but always like ahead of the curve in terms of just fundamentals. I also love how um, Scented stays up on high ground here. Well, these two just reign supreme. Edgy with the minigun Rex down below with whatever he has. Also, he has that heavy snipe if he ever needed to pop in, but. See if it's the same. Scented could be the guy that just stays on high ground all the time. Set plays are possible. I want to see how this split actually develops. Because they got black tops this time instead. Or maybe even got doghouse. Oh. Nice. This actually works out really well. Stealing doghouse from this team, right? The last time we saw we had, we saw the black top split, but they wanted they wanted to take the same split that they edgy scented and Rex took the last game that we saw, but because they were going for it by with a single person and then edgy and scented come with two, they were able to push them off easily and not force the 50-50. I mean it could have been a 50-50. They were hoping that Da would back up there and he did. Then immediately run back. Okay. This split that these guys are getting is a really good split. Look, Da Da. Flame and Hotha are coming in from all sides. This could be bad, man. This could be bad. This engagement. He's rough. But it breaks down. It breaks down. See how they're all now starting to be so much closer? Just because they turtle and they don't keep up the large split. Jesus, you guys have a mat.
fighting in retail is toxic. You ha they build fight, and they have to like. They have to come down after that because they're gonna get pushed down by all the zombies unless they're connected to the building, which they were. They were connected to that building originally. This one. Actually, you saw whoever it was was way out in the open over here and he came back, went inside the building and then started build fighting. Whereas these guys, when they start their build fight, they're, they're not structured well at all. No zombies can take it down. Um, I do want to point out just a few things from Edgy. If we can go back to the start of that fight. So, I already talked about backing up. That, fo that, that forces this formation that they had to collapse. It's no longer a pinch on these guys at all. They needed to stay wide still. And then this guy even maybe approached even wider too. To keep that formation, right? To keep that pinch going well. But instead they just full on build fight just because they got a couple of tags. And one person getting tagged is not the end of the fight, right? It's not the same thing as duos where you can be like, okay, focus on this guy, right? Because there's still two more people that you have to keep at bay. Keeping edgy not at bay here is the thing. Look at this, how he reaches this cone over here. This is actually his cone right here. To grab that and then also to even try dimidoming him, obviously. Edgy, the king of it. And every time he's able to get one little tag on somebody, even 31 with this tag, is crucial. There's another attempt at a demo dome. And then what he does is the wall and then this floor. This is a common, common, common tactic. But to do it here and then watch. Gets the tags and then pressures, pressures, pressures. Make sure that the guy can't heal or at least that he has to reposition. And then when he does that, when he knows that this guy... Sorry. Oh my god, drone please. He knows that this guy has to back up and even think about for a second what he needs to do before healing again. And then he looks around. Make sure that he knows where his teammates are and make sure he knows where everybody is in relation to him. That was what I wanted to point out about that fight. Uh, I do want to see what happened with Scented and Rex. Jesus. <laughs> he got killed by zombies. He got killed by zombies. Um, you have to be careful with that. You've got to get the finishes. And not let the zombies get the finish. What is happening? I don't know why he didn't instantly finish him. He would have been safe against that. But the zombies can steal your kills. All right, moving on. Let's just let's just go. Let's just go. Okay, typical rotation to loot lake. And like, I find this pretty interesting how they how they end up going. I wanna I wanna actually go back here to see what the map was looking like when they went to this spot in the map. All right, because edge zone. They could have definitely got farther. They definitely could have gotten in a little bit more. But instead they stick right on the edge of zone. We saw them last time have edge zone. This time let's see if they have a storm scout. They could. No storm scout. Um, yeah, it's, it's just... I guess they want to make sure they have a mountain. They want to make sure they stay on high ground. That might be a tenant of theirs that they have to make sure they get on edge. But... The other thing, too, that we're noticing is all of these fucking players here <laughs> forcing them to maybe come down. Also, the people on top forcing them to come down might just be a product of what they have to do. It's not necessarily a decision that they are making on purpose, right? They might be forced into this decision. I'm going to go with that, judging by the amount of people just flying over them right now. <laughs> And their health. Like, they have to base up without making it. Yeah, Scented is even split from them. So this is definitely not a decision that they wanted to make. Definitely not a decision that they wanted to make. But also possibly a product of them having to stay in retail for so long and farm the pylons. The Zate flank, baby! The Zate flank! 
It's going to cause them to die. They needed an impact frag, though, based on how they're playing. Edgy has mats. Rex has mats. Scented does not have mats. And, of course, the open slots. They have good... Lo oh, the heals are bad, too. So, I could understand. Especially after they got that knock. But... Only one kill here, I think. They didn't even get the finish on it, which isn't important. I think the loot is the most important thing here out of everything. I really like this push. They needed something, so they just go for it. Edgy with the Zate flank, which I'm calling now when you when you <laughs> sneak up on somebody and crouch up behind them. I'm calling that the Zate flank. Thank you so much. Replay mode. Oh, they got a Storm Scout Sniper too. Come on, bruh. Come on, bruh. They lose that Storm Scout Sniper, but they know where half half, half, half is. It's funny, you gotta you gotta think that uh Falconer and them. Where are they? Falconer? They could actually see that there's a Storm Scout on the ground. And know that they can rotate to half and half out. Like, know where to go for half and half out. Yeah, you gotta pay attention to that these days. Alright, so they get second with Rex down. Let's go. And a decent amount of kills. We're gonna watch Scented. I like how quiet they stay. They know they need to play for placement. They know they need to get ahead. They stay in the same box. And it's a good position because of how connected they are with everybody else. I am so far away. Stupid drone. Like, they're on the outside of this whole cluster of people. Let me turn on nameplates. There's actually nobody right behind them, which is good for them. They, being in one box, nobody is really going to pressure them based on what else is in what else is in their cluster. What else is in this build. So they could stay in one box and then just go out to the side and gatekeep. But you can see they weren't shooting too much. They know they need to go for placement. There's the opposite too, right? Where you play a little bit wider, you build your boxes out. In order to get different angles. Which is what Zate, Saf, Bizzle and stuff would do. See, there's a hint again, guys, that they're launch padding. Obviously, we know they're launch padding based on the fact that they broke their pyramid. And everything that they are looking, but other people around them could 100% know there's a launch pad coming out here because of the way that they built. They could have gone for height here, but they don't. Too early. And too far ahead or too far behind the zone. Is that edgy? That was funny. He could have RPG'd there. It would have caused edgy to have a little bit of trouble. I don't know why I'm opening the map. But uh, edgy was playing with the notion that he was going to shockwave up and take a hit on him anyways. And then the pressure from the AR. Easy enough. Easy enough. Holy fuck, that was a huge lag. Holy fuck, man. Does he have a minigun again? Edgy with the minigun again, baby. wonder how he's choosing his targets here. I like that little dip he did on Vinny. He knew he was tunneling forward. He takes out a little bit, drops down, and then tunnel and gets him in the back. Being in the back is the hardest spot for Vinny to cover himself. Um, and then I'm wondering how he's targeting people right now. 
I kind of feel like obviously he's looking for any damage he can get, but then also like the the box that he was fighting earlier. I, I forget which team it was. It was like a full team in a box. It'd be interesting because like you could target anybody who's a full trio just to try to cause them as much trouble as possible and to make it even and make it forced to be all duos, for example, or all solos. And then here, just kind of spamming in all sorts of different directions. I don't know. There's no way he know he can tell that Arkham and, and them are in. I need to turn off these nameplates, actually. They're, they're causing me to think about things that aren't actually there. Think about things that aren't actually there. Does it reset the the cooldown when you're minigunning and he swaps weapons all the time? Does that reset the cooldown? Does that do anything beneficial for the minigun? Nah, nah, yes, yes, nah, nah, yeah, okay, chat. <laughs> Yeah, they're trolling. I don't think it does. Judging by the times he has gone to actually full on closure. If it did, he would never he would never go to overheat. They should win this game. Is Vinny and Falconer? Oh, snap. Yeah, I think that. That can come at any second. Pretty funny. Oh. He was so close to being connected there. Mom, bro. What? Come on, bruh. Edgy. That's disgusting. Come on, get it down. Come on, baby. One more. Yes. The full heal. Holy shit, Pearl. Pearl's on two. Oh my god, bro. That was insane. Thank you for making us watch that. How did he? Holy crap, Ola. I want to see Pearl's heal off. That was a fucking crazy game. Dang, he off healed. Pillar, you're kind of nuts, though. The slurp. Holy. He off field for 20 seconds. For 20 seconds he off field this. That's crazy. Um, that's just nuts, man. That's just nuts. I like how he also staggers the campfire. Extends his life a little bit longer. He still has that slurp ticking. Just two ticking and then with a with a band-aid you can stay alive as long as you have the stuff ticking. I wanna go back again and watch uh watch that shot by Scented era. Who was that? Was that Scented? Bandages are really good for heal offs. Yeah. If you're wondering, like bandages are the best item to have for heal offs. Cause Med kits, you need too many things to make double med kits work, right? You need uh you need a campfire and then or you need a slurp. 
and then even then like to have it for over all the med kits bandages are actually better That's just disgusting, bro. And then, yeah, Chug Splash is obviously, Chug Splash's instant heals are much better than anything. Ah, oh, he had to reload there. He would have gotten another tag here on Aiden. Another tag would have been nasty. Interesting. Watch how he watch how he actually jumps. Oh, I thought he jumped into it. But the distance that he had between that that and the shockwave to play the shockwave and be able to play it in such small confined quarters, he kind of used that like a dash, right, to push himself outwards, and not too far outwards. He used it like an E day dash to get ahead of somebody's tunnel to kill Aiden there. That was nasty. That was nasty, nasty. And then to follow it up. Ooh! Poor Clocksick. He had no idea what the hell just happened. As a native. <laughs> and then just look. If you just look there for a second, how much Edgy stayed inside his own at the brief moment, doing literally everything right in these last couple of seconds, except missing this these campfire placements. Like if he got these a little faster, he could have possibly, possibly stayed up enough. I don't think so, though. I think that our boy at Pearl had 36 HP. No more band-aids. Possibly, man. Possibly could have healed three more ticks. That's nuts. That's a ridiculous game. Can you guess that this is going to be the more contested spot? I don't think so. I think that's pretty even. If it was this way, you can kind of guess that this is going to be more contested, right? And you can just go for black tops. But then, obviously, that makes it so that you land later. I don't know, a little, little bit of game theory there involved and a little bit of guesswork. I think I would prefer just to stick with the tried and true just look <laughs> instead of guess. This is a rough situation for all these guys. <laughs> Yo, 50 50 is really fun. 50 50s is really fun. This the beauty. This the beauty, and a, a good job by them to recognize this situation, get the loot, and push fast enough. And be effective enough. Look, look how many mats Scented has. Let's see. He used a little bit, right? To get up over here. Probably had about 200 mats total when he first got that snipe. Now he's down to four, right? They're not pushing at all. Rex, meanwhile, did farm up a lot. While they let Edgy, who also didn't farm up much, push this fight. I think that would be the way to do it, even if this was a full trio over here. They probably have the good awareness to know that it isn't a full trio. While looking at the feed. And listening. Yeah, but Rux is fucked here. There's nothing you can do. Nothing you can do! With the zombies too, it's like, GG, bro. Oh, he got a kill. No, don't finish scented. He got the finish, bro, Rux. Wait, it's Pika. Pika, calm down. Pika just fucking took out two of them. <laughs> no way, bro. I'm going back. Pika, stop. Damn, scented. A bot. That was so close. 
Oh, bro. Pika is so good close range. He hit only headshots with that tack. And then, yeah. These zombies make this so stupid. He didn't get the finish on this one. That would have been fucking clutch. Alright. Let's move forward. Obviously, they get the reboots here. This is actually fucking insane. How many, like, different fights they got into. Scuffles they got into. I won't even watch them get the reboot. Thank you, Battle Map. Making me waste more time. Yo, that's a... That's a... It's funny. Okay, so if you want to reboot out of retail, you can use the, the Drift Boys. Just go to Lonely and you're chilling. Cool, cool. Glad we got that out of the way. Oh, they got Zone. So they come back to retail, obviously. I'm always scared. I, I, I always had this, this assumption that rotating through retail was really bad a lot of times. Rotating through it when the Zone is coming is probably bad. But when, when Zone is here and you need to rotate through... You could do that because you could farm so much on your way through. It's just like this random bad assumption that I that I had. It's like rotating through tilted, right? Rotating through old tilted was so good the entire time, but so many people have this fear of rotating through these towns because of the third parties. To not like All right, so I, I had this conundrum when I was watching uh Mitro, Benji and Mongrel they actually landed lonely. They did a, a different drop where they landed lonely. They needed to secure the game. It was their last game. And this is a blunder to me. What they did was they did exactly what this team does here. They actually wanted to fight the team in retail, which you think about it. And it does make some sense because of the, the, the amount of loot that the team in retail is going to have. You know that they're going to have loot 100%. There's no denying that they're going to have loot, but Half the time it ends up being such a stalemated, stupid fight out of zone and stuff like that, that you're still risking so much. You still want to get those kills, but it's so easy for this fight. Even, even though there's that huge incentive of if I kill this team, I can win the game because I get all their stuff. Um, because there's not, it's not about like, you know, launch pads or shockwaves or anything like that. It's literally about the weapons itself. It's not something that fly edge or edgy Rex incented can spend and can waste it's not about their mats it's not about their heels it's not about any of that it's about their weapons exactly um so i don't know it's a it's a a thing that people are gonna have to think about and should think about i feel like this push should be coming way 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 earlier though And I love this disengage. I love it. <laughs> Rex. Look, they're still rocketing the fucking high ground builds and stuff like that. They have no clue that they're gone. They have no clue. So thank you, Battle Map, for showing us that this is a thing. The only difficulty now here is that they were spotted. So this team could still be, like, annoying. And go ahead and try to keep them out of zone even further. But I love what they do here. Recoup some materials back outside his zone and then rotate in if they need to. They have a med kit, they have band aids, they have a campfire, and then they have all this metal that they can recoup in terms of materials. All right, cool. Moving forward. Curious why they come back into retail. <laughs> this is this is like, I'm like yes, yes, yes. I agree with everything until they come here. I don't know why they just rotate through the forest. I think what's funny too is that that team that they fought earlier is actually dead. The one that was holding them. And that's the launch pad I saw in zone way earlier. Another edge zone rotate. This one was forced on them again. But I feel like retail 
This is the third game we've watched, the third time they've had an edge zone rotate on something that's been forced upon them. This time it was really forced. That first polar, that first winter game was not as forced. This one was 100% forced. And I said it's not as forced because they spent so much time in retail. They have great movement. They have great rotations. Some of the best, cheapest rotations I've seen. I actually could have gone back and get that launch pad, but it's way too risky with how many people are in zone and on high ground. I bet you that guy just straight up died. With how they were getting that rotation for free anyways. Worth. Fucking like the gold tack. Is that a thing? I'm confused. Is this is this a thing? Or is it just like not giving a fuck? Oh my goodness, that was close. Uh, but because edgy or because scented actually placed. Place a launch. No, he didn't place that wall, but who did place that wall? Somebody placed the wall. It should have gone down. Why am I all the way in retail? Oh, sweet. I can fix it like this. Cool. This right here. Placing that wall. And this wall saved it for both of them to be able to catch that. Clutch, baby. Clutch. All right, I think we're going to be watching Edgy Minigun plays again. I, I really like what Rex is doing here. He, they know that they're getting to Rex, and something that I've seen a lot of people do is they ask and i can't hear their comms so obviously i don't know if this is actually what's happening um i can't hear their comms but it looks like rex is like he's the guy that has the best position so they decide they want to go to rex okay and instead of being can you get to me and then still playing your game rex just stays still for a little bit he just stays completely still so that edgy and scented don't have to track him through his tunnels uh, a mistake I see a lot of people make is they're all talking. They're like, can I, can you get to me? Can you get to me? Can you get to me? All the meanwhile, they're all doing their different things. They're all going in different directions. They're all tunneling or shock waving. It's like, can you get to me? Well, no, I can't get to you. I have no idea where you are because you've just moved three times. All right. So this, when Rex was here and you could see edgy and scented making their way all the way back to them, they were like, they were chilling. Rex was chilling. He didn't do anything. One guy put peeked him. He just held his wall. That's it. He stayed very still. And then finally, when they when he knew Sentinel Edgy was gonna be able to get to them, they then he finally turned a little, little bit forward. Oh, that lag spike is huge at that point in the game. That's the second time, pretty much the same spot. Ah, oh, come on, man. His heavy snipe didn't shoot. All right, guys, let's see. Eighth zone. Are they going to take high with a minigun again? Also, that's a that's like edgy loves the heavy snipe and fucking roofs above him. Just to take control of things slightly. Ooh. Replay mode doesn't show you a trap is who's. 
Yo, it sucks that there's a guy named Alithion West. Oh, actually, sorry. I thought it was Alinity. I was like, damn, that sucks, bro. Your name's Alinity? <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Eight zone? Edgy. Bring it in, baby. Where's that minigun? Here it is, guys. Here it is. Minigun shockwaves. They split them both. And they just go for it. And get hype for free, dude. Holy shit. That's the biggest set play I've seen in a long time. And this is something... Again, I have to give credit for, to Psalm for this. This is the first guy I've really seen use the minigun as a way to take height together. One guy goes on one corner and splits and takes that. And the other guy goes to the other corner and just miniguns it down. <laughs> Where's Edgy at? I hear that minigun coming out. Just way too good, boys. This shit is way too good. Somebody's giving him a pea shooter from outside his zone. <laughs> He just coned him. This man's name is Free Thinker Prod. <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap. Okay, buddy. I think so far the one thing we've learned is minigun good. Again, we learned that all the way back in the Metro VOD review, and then I think the Stompy and Shinkin VOD review. And then high, high ground timing in trios is 8 zone for edgy centered in Rex. And it's clinical. They save, one sh uh, save two shockwaves. They split in different boxes and they go height right as edgy splits out to the side. And they use the shockwaves first. Right? They grab that attention first. Edgy has his path planned out. They grab the attention with the shockwaves. Edgy goes out to the side and knocks it all down, trying to get it before they land with the shockwaves, but it doesn't matter. He's just going to pressure whoever's shooting them as the most important thing. He's not trying to knock down the build unless there's a complete opportunity to like get four kills with it. He's just looking to open up that space for his teammates. Um, before we move, I wanted to answer this question. For the video, FPS Gambit donated two dollars. He said, "Bala, do pros actually think through every single thing you're talking about in the VOD reviews? When I play, play, I try to think about certain decisions, but I don't think I could possibly process all this information while mid-fight." Yeah, no, they don't. This is all muscle memory. This is all planning, right? They don't think about this stuff. They just plan it ahead of time. Um, this this set play, obviously, it's worked for them time and time again in practice. They say, "Hey, let's try this thing where we use the minigun and we try it in a zone, for example." And then they're like, okay, let's do the minigun play. There's no thinking about it. It's just, let's do the minigun play. They already know what it is. In terms of all the mechanical stuff that we're talking about, literally most of these things, except like rotations, is all muscle memory of these pros. It's all game sense that they've played through many, 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 many times that they don't have to think about it at all. Besides like rotations and positioning. I think that's the only thing that people think about. I think that's the only thing that people th think about. Okay. Yo, Spot the Dog, thank you for the resub. For two months in a row, you're nuts. Much love, baby. All right, we got one more game with these guys, and then we're going to move into Booga. And then tomorrow, I know a lot of people are on their toes, and they want to see the um, they want to see the Letwick, Dementos, and Flexi VOD review, and they also want to see the King VOD review from World Cup. That's going to be tomorrow, guys, around the same time. I know I've been slacking, but that, that will be tomorrow. I don't have enough time to do it all today. Need a break, and then I have a lot of shit to do today before I leave for Twitch Rivals. So, do both players Shockwave and one player Minigun? Yep, that's what we've seen so far. When is Twitch Rivals? That's uh, Wednesday and Thursday. Is King more efficient than Booga and kills? Yes, King had probably the most kills, I think, out of anybody in solos. Uh, Rod review Arkham, Falcon, and Vinny for next time. No, probably not this week. Probably not this week. Maybe another week. All right, those are the four VOD reviews that I'm doing this week. 
Anybody else, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to get to. In Boogie Have More still? Possibly. I don't know. Possibly. I have to go back and check. No, I didn't see Arab's tweet. I mean, I saw it. I just didn't click on it. I saw it late last night. Hmm. I'm looking at the minimap right now, and I see them above Lonely Lodge, and the arrows are all pointing in that direction. But okay, it's not. They're actually staying with retail in the last game. Staying with retail in the last game, boys. Holy fuck. This shit. How many people are on their ass? That's nuts. Wait, what happened to Rox and them? Oh, they split off. They're like, fuck this, dude. Y'all can have this shit. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is the first time I'm seeing... No, never mind. I was going to say, the first time I'm seeing them have a, po uh, a negative split. Right? A split that's harder for them versus the other team. Because I thought that they were getting pushed to these three, these, these three residential buildings. And then Barl and them basically cut them off. And they're going to be able to take all the blacktops. But no, it's the opposite. Since it actually stole this building slightly, just stole one thing. And then it backed up. And these guys have shit, right? Doghouse and Taco. And then Edgy is actually containing them. Right, so it's gonna be hard for them to move. They can maybe get this house, or maybe make a full conceited push all the way over with with all their mats, and then get. They probably even would only be able to get this. Right, they might they might be able to steal this, but this is a huge loot and balance actually in favor of Edgy Rex and Scented. So the split again goes in their favor. And I've talked about the importance of that before so important yes this is what i thought they might do is just force the issue and force it before the fight gets too crazy yeah this is gonna be this is this is rough uh for this team this is a desperation play hard desperation play i'm on two times right now I like, he has to be aggressive here because there's two players inside of this box. They, he knows that Derek is going to hold turbo build on him and he's not going to be able to hold the wall. He knows for a fact that that is the case. So he has to be aggressive. Look, he's probably already lost the wall. No way. Did he just do that? No way. Bro, Scented is so nasty. What is that? He has literally back against the wall, has one stair to play with, is disgusting. And this trap with the cone was the dirtiest thing I have ever seen in my life, bro. Was this him or was this is this this is them? This is them who placed the cone. Right? Yeah, no, for sure. That was them. So they coned themselves. <laughs> I was gonna say, I was like, bro, there's no way. If he coned him, I'd have flipped out. I would have flipped out because that's actually the better piece to place, right? To place a cone rather than a stairs when they're forcing into the box. Like, because the stairs is just going to make it so awkward for you. It's going to change all the different angles and you're going to miss all the headshots and stuff. But Oh my god. Yeah, desperation play and Scented played it perfectly, right? The timing there actually was, was slightly, it was forced. He couldn't do anything about it. But the way that he held all of that, you saw he, he made the, the floor pyramid. He actually placed the wall, and then he placed... He should have placed one more. He should have placed a cone that was edited, and then placed the wall on the stairs in the way. Like, if we... I'm not going to go back again, but if he just delays them as enough as possible, and then they're all diving on him. They're all diving on them, and he knew that was the play because there were all three outside. They, he knew that they were just going to rush right in and try to get scented down. That gave him the time to fight this right as his team came in. 
Like if you, he got those two kills <laughs> ridiculously, but that that would have been over for that team anyways. There was no chance for them because Edgy and Rex were coming right behind. I don't see anything that was probably worth watching besides the fact that they go into Paradise. That's probably just a a zone thing. Watch this on 4x slightly zoomed forward. Yeah, it was just first zone went in. They peeked inside of it to rotate. This time, there's definitely no forcing of their edge zoneness. So we'll see what kind of decisions they make to rotate. Max mats on all of them, probably. Still. There's, 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 there, they have no problems whatsoever just staying in an edge zone. Not going center. Look at this. This is such a weird movement. This is not a movement that anybody else would make. They actually move back. Out of zone. So... That slight movement, not only is it good positionally for the launch pad, if they know they're gonna use a launch pad, but they refresh on their mats. Still weird, look look how sent, he's not even going into zone. He's gonna edge himself in on the edge. Oh, have Storm Scout, so they're, they're playing for zone. Well, last time they didn't do that either. They had Storm Scout and they played for a weird position on zone too. Based on what I'm seeing in replay, only one pad. Obviously that's not reliable. Then they, they have Storm Scouts still. Like, they moved like this. They moved up through here to place a launch over here. So strange. So strange, but yet so cheap. Look again. 150 mats almost on all of them. Almost max. Every single player. I have to do some investigations on this rotations, man. These these guys are these guys are on another level. In terms of cheap rotations. They're on another level. Obviously the Storm Scout plays a huge factor into it. Wait, is Jarvis back on West? I just saw Jarvis die in the feed. Is he back on West? Probably a different Jarvis, right? Yes, he is. Interesting. Going full in on that phase house, huh? I like the teams that just chill, man. There's so many teams that just tunnel, tunnel, tunnel. We gotta go, we gotta go, 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 go. I like the teams that just like, they're fine with just staying in boxes separate. Can I eventually just get right back together. All right, eight zone RPG, double impulse. You guys ready for it? Edgy's gonna split these. Scented is gonna go for our high ground RPG, eight zone. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. It went earlier, and Edgy didn't split. It's not gonna work this time. Is it gonna work? Yes, it is. No, it's not. Bruh. Please kill him! Guys! Fucking kill this guy! <laughs> that was all uh, Rex and, and uh, Edgy were down below, both shooting this guy at the same time, even while Sento was trying to reload his stuff.
I prefer the minigun actually. The minigun gives you so much more control and you don't have to waste time. You don't have to have dead time with your uh with your RPG reload time. Also, notice how they use the campfires over the truck splashes. Even though the truck splashes would be so efficient here. Needed the health, but they still have big pots. So even in the final seconds, they're very, very, very aware of what the most efficient use of their utility and heals are. And then they give the Rex the shields, I mean the truck splashes, and the campfires for heal off if they need to. And now they get spammed on both sides. Later B. Die! So many people they just can't kill. Oh, Rex goes down. This is a mistake. I thought Rex was going to be the guy to stay high, but I guess not. It's not a mistake, because remember if you think back, Scented was the guy who stayed on high ground in that first game when I when I asked, is this a thing? Are they going to be doing this? Ooh, that's not a mistake. I like, I like, I like, I like. I'm not sure why they wouldn't give the heals to Scented in this case, but regardless. These guys are nuts. These guys are nuts. Thank you guys for watching this one. See you guys in the next. If you liked it, please like, subscribe, do all the things on my social media. It helps a lot. If you like all the live tweets, uh, everything, it just is the best help uh, to help me get the word out that we're doing this and help you guys keep getting them. That's what it's all about, right? So we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.